match review comes to us from LA Taylor, who has 550 hours on PS5, so uh, they do not have, um, they don't really have a lot of hours. Uh, I know that's weird to say with 500 hours, but I don't expect most people to be like, like fundamentally confident or competent or confident for that matter <laughs> in their play style and knowing their fundamentals uh, until you're at least 1k hours so you still got a bit of ways to go so there's probably gonna be a lot of stuff that i don't like dink you for because well you're still learning the game for the most part um let's take a look at your uh, item in your perks okay you're on yamaka residence which is a fairly middle of the road map uh Generally, it kind of like slightly airs on the side of Survivor, but like it's not like aggressively in your favor. Um, got a, a, a purple beamer. Um, do keep in mind that green flashlights do last longer, so you can do the purple beamer thing for its other benefits. But like if you want something that lasts a while, green beamer is the better option. Um, you're doing kind of like a uh, an aura reading build with Kindred and Wiretap um, and Distortion to protect yourself. Um, these perks are fun, but not fairly, not really strong. The only one I would recommend here. Uh, to keep as much as I hate to say it like distortion and kindred are kind of the um the perks that are like actually good here but they don't have any synergy with anything else like you'll get wider aura reading because of open and kindred but that doesn't actually help too tremendously much I would much rather see like a, an exhaustion perk in one of these slots like sprint burst like life like dead hard and then maybe like one gen perk like deja vu um that way your build is a little bit more well-rounded so yeah that'd be my advice there <laughs> It's important to get these solo gens done quicker rather than later because, okay, well, you're really, anyways, it's quicker to, <laughs> ah, is doing solo gens like that that only have like one position you can sit on are important because other gens, uh, if you're in a, in a pickle and you're in a bind and you, it's like the last gen or a really, really important gen to like break a three gen or something, you can always double up as survivor and get it done quicker. With those, you can't. So realistically, push comes to shove, you should probably get those done sooner rather than later, instead of leaving them for another time. Okay, your Nia is AFK. Okay, so in situations like this, and you, you may not have known this, I, I've been trying to think of like, I don't know how I would do this. Maybe I would put it directly on the response page. I've made videos about it before, but I need to consolidate all the rules in like one area. Um, if somebody like DCs early in your in your killer game, somebody's AFK in your killer game, somebody's AFK in your survivor game, it's typically like not a good match to send in for match reuse because like your victory or loss will be based on like somebody literally being out of the game <laughs> for a bit. So it kind of skews the match a bit because I'm like, part of this is going to be like really, really rough for your team just because somebody was AFK, which is not a skill issue on anybody's. Like, it's not, it's not the killer playing well, it's not you playing bad. So, it's just like, it's just not good for me helping you fix your mistakes. Okay, thankfully they did come online fairly quickly, so it's mostly okay. Yeah, they were only AFK. For, well, a full minute of being AFK is pretty bad. Thank you. That's that's pretty not great. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I've said this in plenty of other match reviews. Um, but I'm gonna say it here again. In terms of survivor efficiency on generators, it's always better to be split up than together. Even if somebody like runs up with you and joins you on a gen, it's better for you to like split up and and go to separate areas. Because essentially the the situation that just happened is why you don't do that. Because when you're doubled up on a gen and the killer shows up, they knock both you off the gen. And now the only person on a gen on this entire team is, is Sable. Essentially gen progress for the rest of the team just got stopped because you guys were doubling up. Whereas if you guys were on separate gens, only one person gets knocked off a gen and gen progress is still happening. So make sure you're splitting up, especially early on. Yeah, it's important to note that uh, your friend did not get mandibles. The Nia. Okay, now she is. So he was having a hard time finding her initially. For the record? You mean off the record? It perk from Dead by Daylight. 
<laughs> Kazuichi woke up too. Yeah, that was that was a, a a trauma response right there. That's what that was. Okay, so it's kind of hard to realistically if you're in this situation. If you're in this situation, um, you are doing the right thing by not going for the save. Tap and Sable are not actively on a gen, so they're not occupied. They're not contributing to the game right now, technically. So it should be their responsibility for the two of them to go for the save and not you. You should just stick your gen. What the f- what was that? What? He's not even near you. What it? What? Uh huh? What it? What? What is that? Wow. Okay. Um. So let's go ahead and break this down. Um, pallets are a a finite resource on maps, and some maps have low pallet counts. Um, when it comes to mine is wretched shop. So, like, just chucking a pal like that when the killer is, like, that far away from you is not great. That is not great. Because, like, he may not even end up, like, chasing you at this loop at this point. And in that case, he could just come back and kick this for free without even you getting any sort of value out of this whatsoever. There are characters that... Free dropping is the smart play because the benefit of you being injured is so good that you should absolutely pre drop. Characters like Oni, characters like Spirit. But throwing a pallet when the killer's not even close to you like this, like, I would have conserved this a bit and thrown it when I needed to and not just like. Yeah, he's even stopping and kicking the, the, the gen. Like, he'd even like. Oh, I broke your favorite McDonald's cup. What? There's active, like, there's like good plastic McDonald's cup. There's not just. Wow, he is. The lag made him kick that at angle. That's funny. Yeah, you got like half a loop out of that pallet because you broke it too early, or you threw it too early. You need to pay attention, in <laughs> Chase. You almost ran back into him. You are not looking behind you like literally at all, especially, especially against the unknown, where like you have to look at him to get rid of your weakened state, like. You gotta be looking behind you and chase. You gotta, gotta. Cause you're like, he, you're lucky he wasn't paying attention either. Cause that was just a free hit for him. Cause you were, you were asleep at the wheel. You were autopiloting really hard. Fun fact: I say this every time. This is a thing. If you're trying to hide from the killer, uh, you are actually quieter while crouched. Like your breathing is a little quieter while you're crouched. So if you're trying to like hide from the killer, uh, crouch, they won't potentially hear you through the wall. Is he going for adept? Is he was he lost his Terrius, so that would probably be un unforeseen from kicking the gen. And then that's uh unbound, so. It's good that you stick the gen here because you realize that like nobody currently is has any gen progress going on, so the game's gotta keep going. It's not kind of funny, it's one of those things that like Do many players don't understand that like if they don't <laughs> if you don't stick the gens, the match isn't gonna end. It doesn't matter how well you loop, it doesn't matter how many hook saves you get or how altruistically you play, if nobody's doing the gens, like Ash doesn't. Ash doesn't. You don't win. <laughs> like, you just don't. <laughs> he, he is. He is dead set that you were there. He, he fucking threw that artillery. He was like ready. I don't know if it's adept, because that looked like a fairly big explosion on that gen. We shouldn't have gave pop. If you are unaware, Pop has a larger uh, explosion off a of gen kick than the, than like when you kick normally. That's a thing you can use to identify if Pop is in play. Just playing Battleship, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like how you got scared of the of the, of the uh, hallucination. Um, I would get rid of this before you start working on the gen. Because he can just essentially tell uh, right back here, back to this gen, um, the moment he's done with whatever chase he has. So I would have gotten rid of that hallucination. Okay, good. I would have done that in reverse order, but like, yeah. He will know that you were you did return to the gen because that's gone, but that's only if he's paying attention. 
And if he's in chase, he's way less likely to pay attention like he was like half a second ago. Okay, you're he it, when he's at the far terrius like that, you're not necessarily in danger yet. Like far terrius is not necessarily a, a, a rise for concern. If you start hearing like a far terrius, I would look to the left of the screen and be like, okay, is anybody in chase? Honestly, if you see the mandibles moving, you're you're fine, you're safe. This nobody was visibly in chase, so it's a little bit more reasonable that you got a little, little scared here. But still, until you hear the terry the the, the terror rate is increased, like intensify, you're still probably fine. Especially since you got rid of the hallucination, like he, uh, yeah. So you essentially wasted a lot of time just hiding when you could have just that could have been gen time match times gen time. I always think I don't know a, a great deal about Survivor. But then we do match reviews and I just like there's stuff I don't even like consciously think about that I'm doing. That's actually like good happens. Yeah, that definitely seems like Bob, because that was a huge explosion. And that's uh that's uh that's unforeseen. He's not there anymore. You heard the teleport noise. Unforeseen just uh, uh, gives the terror ideas that he has to the gen. I will say that when they're when a killer is this aggressive about defending a specific gen, a lot of time it's better to just like go do a different one <laughs> because like he has essentially like kept you in this one part of the map for like five minutes straight. <laughs> like that's five minutes enough time to do multiple gens if you just went somewhere else. But instead you and him have had this little back and forth over and over and over trying to contest this gen. Whereas if you had just uh, done something else, you would have been fine. Also, um, you have wiretap. Did, did did you forget that you have wiretap? Because I haven't seen you install it. Did you just forget about one of your perks? Because that's not good. That's not good at all. I'm not sure. I haven't run them both at the same time, Phantom. Yeah, now somebody's dead. Like, if you had contested, uh, if you went to a different gen instead of just trying to, like, you know, essentially what amounts to bicker back and forth with the unknown in that gen, like, you would have been fine, but, like, I don't know why you did that, like, literally at all. I just knows where you are. Yeah, you just... Yeah, I don't know why you're doing that. Good fake there. Now you're looking behind you and Chase. You weren't doing that before. Why did he think he was going to hit that? That wasn't even close. <laughs> Good job to avoid the hallucination there because he could just teleported and hit you. He's going to leave you though. Why do you crouch so much? Why is that a thing you do? Last time is gen time. The time spent kind of just like generally crouch walking and afraid. Like that's that's a lot of wasted time. How does this match go on for a whole another eight minutes? Like he yeah, has somebody dead at two gens. How does he screw this up this badly? Like this should be like a pretty simple win for him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that aim was interesting. He's making a mistake right now because he's chasing you who has zero hook states at one gen. He should be focusing on people that are already hooked. Like the tap and the Nia. He shouldn't be chasing you here. Hey, Nevermore. It's good to see you, bud. Hope your Monday's going well. Kind of zoned you into nothing by doing that, though. I probably just would have taken the weakened state and kept running in main because now you have nothing.
<laughs> I love his little walk. It's so cute. Dun, 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 dun. A holy hand grenade? What, like a replica of it? Or like, what do you mean? Fortunia is just also a crouch on me, so she's just kind of vibing and doing nothing. Which is very unfortunate. This is why I harp on people so much for doing, like, the crouch walk thing and being so scared, because, like, when more than one player does that in a game, it's just like that just proportionally affects gen progress so much. <sighs> he's very nice. He could have got gone after you there. He chose not to. Yeah, he should have hit. He should have one hundred percent went for you there. The saw share at the mall. Ooh, I haven't been one of those forever. And he just leaves the tap. Are you guys gonna win this just because he's just making hard decisions? Goofy little stuff one. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I feel like he's throwing. He's like being nice when he shouldn't be. He should be like sticking the landing, but he's like giving you guys a lot of like leeway that he shouldn't. You know what's funny? You said I've never actually used one of those. I thought you meant the holy hand grenade. I'm like, is that a common thing? Hey, you remembered your perk. You you played for four straight gens and never used it. But hey, good job. Why do you abandon that gen? Period. Why are you just why are you, you spend a lot of time just kind of like all, you have a lot of time downtime in your match in general, like whether that's crouch walking around, just running around aimlessly, like. Match time's gen time. This could all be pressure that you're applying to the to the gens, and you're just kind of like vibing. You're just kind of just hanging out, which is not good. You need to convert that time you spent either crouch walking or just running around into gen time. Okay, hopefully that nail yeah, lasts long enough for you guys to get this done. Honestly, you guys should have lost this. It should have been a 4k. He's being nice. He was nice to not down you at the at the hook. At the, or not at the hook, but like next to the hook when you guys were healing earlier. He was nice to leave both of you alone and not continue chasing the tap. He essentially lets you reset for free. He may not intentionally be being nice. He may just not know any better, but like either way, the effect is the same. Yeah, that's wild that he got somebody dead at two gens and threw the whole game. That's wild to me. That Nia, even though she was AFK, she's putting in her work. She's contributing. It's buying you guys the time to get out. Not tap going back in. This match goes on for another four minutes. You're at the exit gate. How's this last for another four minutes? Oh, she's like really far away from the doors. This is not going to be beneficial. At least the one you actively did, she is very far away from. I would start. I would try to see if there's one that's like. Yeah, okay. There is one closer to her. Oh, he didn't wait for you to get it done, done, Hecker, though. And there's no excuse for that because you can see. You can actively see if somebody's working on a door or not. He should have waited. <laughs> You're doing the right thing by getting both doors done, because no matter what happens here, there's at least two options to escape. Honestly, when you're in this situation where there's like a... Like it's already a 3v1, uh, I would open whatever door is closest to the hook survivor, because you don't have an extra fourth person to, um, to like open the door on the way to the door. And that could be the difference between a down and making it out. I know it puts you on a timer, but like... Like, like I said, you, you just don't have the extra person 
open the door, so I'd rather put on a body block. And he is also playing this poorly. He is... He is. He should be just sticking right next to that hook and camping really close. Shouldn't be, uh, wandering around. Yeah, he essentially gave you guys that save for free. Yeah, I don't... I, you should have probably seen that coming. I don't know why you didn't. I wouldn't... Yeah, I don't know why you chose that moment in particular to fuck with this hallucination, but that was a huge mistake. Like, you should have just started running towards the door right there. If you had done that beforehand, yeah, but like... Oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. He's making mistakes, y'all are making mistakes. This is the messiest endgame I've seen in a hot minute. Yeah, this is a mess. You die here? Oh my... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That should have been at least a three out. How do we end up with a 1k? That is... That is wild. Yeah, that was pop. That is wild. That is crazy to me. That should have been a three out. Like, aggressively so. Wow. Okay, so, in terms of your main takeaways, I think the biggest thing that I saw that would have helped you a lot is that you are very, still very skittish and very scared playing the game. Um, you spend a lot of time either running aimlessly or crouching the moment you hear Terry to show up. And here's the deal. If the, if the Terrius is at the far track, meaning that it is far away and you're barely hearing it, you, for the most, most of the time, are not in any danger. Oh, this is not a one-to-one -one thing, but mo most of the time you are not in danger. You only need to start getting concerned if the Terrius starts growing and getting closer, or if like you're aware that they have Terrius affecting perks, which you only had one. Um, you can be like, okay, well maybe I should be a little bit more careful. But you spend a lot of time just crouch walking around or running around, and match time is gen time. All that time you spent lollygagging could have been spent on gens. And especially since the match was as close as it was, an extra gen done earlier would have really, really helped your team. I mean, honestly, I have 550. So that would have helped you a lot. Um, second off, you should definitely, definitely be always looking behind you and chase, especially considering it's the unknown, which is a character that you are required to look behind you and chase to hear the weekend status effect. But generally, looking behind you and chase is always something you should be doing uh, in order to know what the killer is doing and be able to act appropriately. You kind of started doing this more towards the end of the match, but like in the middle of the match, in the beginning, you just kind of like did look behind you and chase. And that's why a lot of your chases went poorly. And there was that one moment I remember at the beginning that like you almost ran directly into him, which you're lucky he wasn't paying attention either. But like that could have been just an easy free hit for like Lily, no reason other than the fact that you weren't paying attention. Um, I think at the end game there, that was literally a match deciding. Um... Like I said, there's a there's a lot. It's hard to form this into one takeaway because like there there was a lot that went wrong there. Um, when you're in a three v one, it's certainly better to just open the door before you do anything because you don't have a fourth person open the door for you. It's better to have the the other players for body blocks at the very least. Um, definitely your choice to mess with the hallucination was not smart. You should have just went to the exit gate. The only one you need to escape. When you need to like, you know, you potentially have to run to the exit gate at any given point. Um, you need to keep in mind that like, I should be able to take or one health state at the very least. I should be able to take at least one health state on the way to said thing, on the way to said exit gate. Um, and by essentially messing with the hallucination like that, you gave him a free health state and then he was able to very easily double down you. So keep those things in mind and I'm sure your matches will go better.